And there was even scenes where he would pretend to possess people. Take a look. Welcome back family, AVS here. And I hope you watch this testimony to the very end because it is extremely, extremely unexpected. At least from my perspective, because when I was growing up, I watched this man wrestle. And he was genuinely one of the creepiest people that I knew about. And I'm not going to lie to you. I actually used to believe that WWE wrestling was real when I was a child, up until around maybe nine or 10 years old. And when I actually would watch this man, I would think he was evil and demonic. And I didn't even know Christ at that time. I didn't even know about God at that time. But I knew that this man was demonic and wicked. And there was even scenes where the WWE would portray this man as satanically possessing other people and speaking through them. So it was an agenda to portray this man as the most wicked thing possible. And he was willingly doing it. Take a look. And in a week from Sunday, you and The Undertaker step inside Hall in a Cell and let <laughs> Join the live, Randy. Where the highway to hell doesn't stop until you come to a dead end. Armageddon. Hell in a cell. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that was extremely, extremely, extremely demonic. And they even had matches where they had to bury people alive. So they literally buried The Undertaker alive. This was a massive event. And then he rose from the dead. You see the level of blasphemy that this man was involved in. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the negative side of this man's life because I'm pretty sure you all get the picture. There was even lightning that struck the grave before he rose from the dead and if you understand the biblical significance of that satan fell as lightning then you understand how demonic this character was in the wrestling scene and the storyline behind him now what i would like to say is these events happened before i was even old enough to be interested in wrestling but i wanted to show you the old events because they was even more extreme at the beginning of his career and i was a really big wrestling fan so i would go and check you know all of the storylines behind these characters and that kind of stuff so you know it was pretty weird but the amazing thing about this video and the part that i genuinely want you to focus on is what happened recently. Yesterday, I was on Instagram and I was scrolling through and I rarely go on that app. By the way, if you're not following my Instagram, St. AVS, go follow me because I'm going to start using it soon. But anyways, I was scrolling through the videos and this testimony popped up and it was truly, truly beautiful. Take a look. I think the greatest thing that you've ever done for me, though, is restore my relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, that is truly, truly beautiful. And I'm going to show you his testimony from his own words, which is also extremely, extremely edifying for us as the body of Messiah. And also for those who are seeking Christ. Many come to Christ after hearing testimonies. So I would love to share that with you as well. But I would like to say beforehand, this is why I believe the scripture tells us, do not judge by the outward appearance. Because you don't know what's taking place in somebody's heart. Yah's plans are extremely perfect. They take place way above the comprehension of human understanding. And this is why we must trust in him and lean not on our own understanding. And do not believe the hypocrites who point fingers at us as the body of Christ and say, doesn't your Bible say do not judge? No, it actually says judge righteously. So you can judge, but do not judge by the outward appearance. Judge righteously based on how the word of Yah instructs us. Now, without any further ado, I'm going to play the full testimony of The Undertaker and how he explains his journey to Christ. And if you've enjoyed this video so far, make sure you do smash that thumbs up button because it helps me out more than you can imagine. And also subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, take a look. Tell us a little bit about your spiritual pilgrimage because you are an active part of Pastor Mac Richard's church in Lake Hills. Where's Pastor Mac? Mac, where are you, Pastor? Pastor, are you here? There's is his he? better half is over here. His better, oh yeah. She's my first cousin, Julie Stan. She is, is this here, girl? right yeah. there. Let's hear it. Julie, Julie. Julie Richard. Yeah. In the house. Yeah, in the house. 
I've always, you know, I've always knew and believed in God. I just didn't lead my life that way. Yes. Um, I've, I've never put a lot into being a celebrity. That mm -hmm. I, I, that just kind of flies right over my head, you know, because uh, that's just not really who I am. Yes. You know. Um, but as you can imagine, you get exposed to a lot of different things, um, you know, because of what you do, and. You know, I lived, I lived a, a pretty excessive lifestyle. Um, so she says, would you please just, just go to, come to church with me one time? I'm like, babe, look, I'm gonna walk in there and the rafters are gonna start shaking. And, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I believe in God, I'm good. Just, I don't wanna, you know, it's not, it's not gonna work. But she, you know, she was very persistent and she, she wanted, you know, she wanted me to be the man that I could be. And, and that has nothing to do with being the undertaker. That's um, right. And so I went and uh, I was, I was, it was just the perfect circumstance at the, at the perfect time. She, she pushed me and I went reluctantly, but once I got there and you know, I, I grew up, I grew up Catholic mm -hmm. and you know, so I'm thinking to myself, man, oh man, I don't want to kneel. I don't want to get down on the pew. Oh, my, man, after 17 surgeries, you could figure my body doesn't really feel good all the time. So I'm like, I'm like, so there were no pews. There were no, you know, I didn't know there was no kneeling and everything. Uh -huh. And I was just, I, I just had this, once again, it was kind of like the Eggman deal. Like I, I was getting myself worked up, right? Yeah. Cause I, I was thinking, okay, all right pastor's going to see me and he is just going to throw fire and brimstone right at me. <laughs> Boom. Sinner, sinner, you know, and it, 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 and it wasn't nothing like that. Mac and, and He's Julie awesome. and his family, they, they were really awesome. And it was, it was more, it was more of a, like of a conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. And I found myself from being, you know, kind of tense and pensive to kind of leaning in and like, wow, this is, yeah, this is, this is, this is pretty cool. This is, yeah. Wow. And that started my, my journey. Yes. Back to leading my life the way I should. Yes. And, and, and Isn't that great? Man, thank you. <laughs> Michelle, and I, I, I can't wait for you to, to meet her one day. She is a very strong woman and she had to be. Um, and she, I mean, she's the one put me in the right place for me to get back my life back on track again to what really matters. And I'm, you know, obviously I'm forever indebted just for that. And not even counting how, you know, she's an awesome mom and, you know, she actually just did her mobile loaves and fish training. So she's just, she's awesome. She's, she brings the best, she brings the best out of me. And you, you were telling me too, when we've talked, it, it's so interesting and, and, just to hear, hear what, what an amazing testimony of, of someone bringing you to church, of course, someone you love so much, and then you, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but I believe you were telling me like how you knew about God, but then that personal relationship, that was, the, that, was that, that, that yeah. trigger. Yeah, absolutely, that was, I, I wouldn't have been able to give you, I, I wouldn't be able to recite any kind of scripture whatsoever that first day. Yes, I knew there was, you know, like I said, I was raised Catholic, you know, yeah in a, in a God fearing home, but I just, you know, all my brothers, all my brothers had to go to Catholic school and, you yeah. know, taught by the nuns and, mm -hmm. and their hands pop with the rulers <laughs> and all that. I, st I still hear it when, when I go home all the time about how, how rough they had it. But, um, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was the, it was the, it was the start of, of, of me and my journey yes. and, and realizing that there was a whole nother part to, to life that I was missing out on. And um, I'm not perfect. <laughs> nor am I. I nor no, is, no one's perfect. No, no I, one I here that. is perfect, Mark. No, no, I, no, no. I, I get that. I mean, my, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm still in my process. Yes. I'm, I'm getting there, but I spend, uh, you know, I, I spend a lot more time these days reading my Bible and, and, and uh, no. Excellent. Hallelujah. The angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner repents. How beautiful is that? Now, if you want to give your life to Christ, if you feel that it is time to come to Christ and fully submit to him, stop living in the world, stop living for death, but live for life, then repent and believe the gospel. 
And what is the gospel? The gospel is that Yahushua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is the word of God. He became flesh 2000 years ago, around about. He died, his blood was shed on the cross and he rose from the dead on the third day. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, according to Romans 10, 9, you shall be saved. So what exactly did Christ do for you? Well, he knows that you are a sinner. There was no way that you could get to heaven by yourself. It's absolutely impossible. Do not believe the false teachers who teach that you can work your way to heaven, that your good deeds are gonna be weighed against your bad deeds. That is an absolute lie. If you are guilty before God, you will be sent to hell and everybody fell short of the glory of God. So what Christ did was come here and fulfill the law. He lived it perfectly. He did not break one commandment. He did not sin, not even once. Then he died for you. His blood was shed for you as an eternal sacrifice and he rose on the third day. So that if you believe in him and confess him, you shall be saved. If you believe in him, you shall be saved. That is the will of the Father that you believe on the one whom he has sent, the Son, his word, to become flesh. That is the image of the invisible God. If you accept him, then on judgment day you shall be innocent, not because of anything that you have done, but because of what Christ has done for you. And you have accepted that gift, the gift of Elohim, the gift of God, eternal life in Jesus Christ, Yahushua Hamashiach. Come to him now. Do not allow anybody to deceive you. The world is a sick place. It is a confused place. They continually throw theories around. But the word of Yah, the word of God is a fact. Pick up your Bible and read today. Don't believe any of the false prophets who came after the book of Revelation. It is all lies. You believe from Genesis to Revelation. Anything that contradicts the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ is directly from Satan is directly from the Antichrist spirit. And I tell you that in love. Come to Christ, put your faith in the true gospel of salvation and receive everlasting life in the Messiah, Yahushua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I love you so much, family. I pray you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. It helps me out extremely. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. I've been going through a lot of spiritual warfare recently, so I do apologize about not uploading as frequently as I normally do. I try to upload daily normally, but I am trying to get back on track and upload far more consistently. But keep me in your prayers, family. I greatly appreciate it, and I love you all very, very much. Shout out to all of the financial supporters of the channel. I greatly appreciate you. If you want to become one, hit that join button. Apart from that, family, may the Most High Yah shine his face upon you always and give you peace, and I'll see you on the next one. Shalom. Shalom.